But Bonhoeffer, at age 14, decides to announce to the family that he wants to be a theologian. Now, again, in this family, you didn't think lightly. He probably was like mulling this over for a year before he, you know, would dare mention it. Because, again, it's not sort of thing like you say, you know, I'd like to do this. And six months later, you change your mind and they say, well, he's young. You know, he doesn't know what he wants. No, the Bonhoeffers would not allow you to do that. So if you were going to go on the record as saying something, you know, they were going to hold you to that for, you know, like a lifetime. So he kept his mouth shut until he's 14. He announces he's going to be a theologian. And what he meant by that, just so we understand, is he wanted to be academically uh, impressive. He wanted to be a theologian. Uh, he wanted to go to Berlin University and distinguish himself in the academic field of theology. He wasn't saying he wanted to be a pastor. Uh, so he goes to Berlin University, and this was the finest place in the world uh, to study theology, and pretty quickly distinguishes himself as, you know, an academic rock star. You have the living legends on the faculty, this great faculty, fighting over him, wanting him to be, to do his dissertation under them. It's almost funny. Um, he gets his doctorate at age 21. Let me say that again. Uh, yeah, anybody here get their doctorate at age 21? I'm just in a crowd like this, there's gotta be at least a dozen or two. Don't, don't be shy, right? No, it is, it is impressive. I, um, uh, I, I should say that I just started working on my honorary doctorate, actually, just a week ago. That's what this is about. Um, so Bonhoeffer gets his doctorate, and his big theological question, this, this, this impressive theologian is asking the big question, what is the church? What is the church? And in the course of answering that question on a very high theological level, he finds that he actually enjoys the church itself. He enjoys working in the church. He enjoys what he called church work, preaching, not just teaching uh, in the theological uh, academic environment, but preaching the word of God, uh, teaching Sunday school. He enjoys that, and he decides he wants to get ordained, but you can't get ordained in Germany at that time until you're 25 years old. Um, so when he's 24, he still has some time. Uh, he decides to spend a year in New York City, which is where I live with my wife and daughter. So he comes to New York in 1930 uh, to spend a year studying at Union Theological Seminary, which was, you know, not really up to snuff in Berlin circles in, in terms of, of theology. Bonhoeffer was not really impressed by what passed for theology at Union, uh, and he says so, and in the book I quote what he writes. It's actually hilarious. Uh, he's definitely looking down his nose at, at uh, Union Theological Seminary. He thinks he can learn some things, but I think he's mostly culturally curious. He wants to go to New York. He wants to experience America. His brother, Carl Friedrich, the brilliant physicist, had been to America the year before. So Bonhoeffer uh, was, was culturally curious, and the whole family was like this again. They knew every painting, every opera. They traveled widely. They were musical geniuses. Uh, have I left anything out? I mean, they really were this impressive family. So he decides to go to New York, in a sense, uh, to explore his, to expand his cultural Horizons, not so much because he thinks he's going to get much out of Union Theological Seminary, which he really did not. Um, uh, Berlin University was theologically liberal, but, Berlin, uh, but uh, Bonhoeffer was not theologically liberal, but he respected the liberal theology at Berlin University, even though he didn't agree with it. But at Union, it's very liberal, and he doesn't respect uh, their theology. He just thinks it's, it's sloppy. Um, but what happens to him while he's in New York that year is he's invited by an African-American student named Frank Fisher... Um, from Alabama to go visit Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem. Uh, and Bonhoeffer, in September of 1930, goes up to Harlem to visit Abyssinian Baptist Church. And what he sees there uh, changes him profoundly. He sees uh, something radically different than what he had been observing in s Protestant mainstream white churches, where as far as uh, he could tell, most people are just playing church. They're just showing up and going through the motions. But here he comes to this gigantic congregation. There were many thousands in the congregation. I think it was literally the largest church in America at the time. Um, I think this is uh, even before Willow Creek. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, but it was this giant church and he sees people, again, all African Americans, who clearly believe this stuff. They clearly are worshiping God. They're worshiping Jesus. When they're singing 
the worship songs, it's, they're really worshiping Jesus Christ. And the sermons were fiery gospel preaching. Um, and these people lived it out. For them, it was the real thing. Bonhoeffer is so moved by this experience in this congregation of what can only be described as suffering people, because African Americans in 1930, 80 years ago, they were no strangers to suffering. This was real for them, and it changes Bonhoeffer dramatically. When he goes back to Berlin in 1931, people know that he's changed somehow. Now before this, and if you read my book, you'll see, I mean, he is theologically orthodox. I mean, he is brilliant. And, and when you read about his understanding of who God is and everything, he, he's right there. But somehow this visit to this African-American congregation changes his heart. And what I neglected to say, shame on me, is that he goes there once and is so impressed, so moved in his heart, that he decides to go back every single Sunday for all of the months that he is in New York City. He gets involved in the congregation, he teaches Sunday school. Now imagine this blonde, bespectacled Berlin academic going up to Harlem among African Americans in 1930 and 31 every Sunday. So it profoundly changes him. He experiences a kind of Christianity that he has not yet experienced. So when he comes back, his friends notice that he's different somehow. They notice that somehow he's, he's not just ambitious as a theologian, but somehow he's taking God more seriously. 